You got to touch, go, go, go. You got to bob square. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, you crazy cats? It's me, Bob. We're doing a fun boxing uh, at an abnormal time, but whatever it is, what it is. What are we talking about? Are we talking about that plastic mountain? No, it's just there on a the kitchen table. Are we talking about the retro fang over to your right? No, it's on a kitchen table. Are we talking about the big land shark that accompanies the baby land shark? No, we're not talking about either. Today, we are doing a, um, a special Transformers episode. How about that? We're going to take a uh, look at two Transformers. The second of which was part of the gift box from my, my buddy Gochitron. So I'm going to piece those out and gradually open all those bad boys and have a lot of fun with those. But we're going to start off with um, an Autobot that I purchased a few months back. He's actually been in a package for a while. I've been hiding him, saving him for such an occasion. But he's been staring at me for way too long. Let's take a look at Cup. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so I mean he he rolls, so I think this is this is his vehicle mode. So I think if you uh, there's not as much articulation as I, I thought judging by the package if my memory serves but okay, so that's that's robot mode. Okay, that's cup as a robot. And then you turn him down and he rolls. Now he's a car. Okay, well, cup's pretty cool. Let's move on. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cup. Yeah, my goodness. Ugh. Jokes. Gotta love the jokes, Bob Squad. Hey, there he is. He is looking old and grizzled, isn't he? That's what I like. I like an old, grizzled, cranky character. And, and he is he is it. You gotta love him. He's like, I always thought Ironhide was the guy he replaced in many ways. I always felt Ironhide was grizzly and old. Uh, or he kind of had that role. Not quite as old as Cup is supposed to be, but you can see in certain episodes. I'm just going to talk about Ironhide, I guess. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, in certain episodes of the, the animated series, the TV show, what the hell, Bob? Um, Ironhide would yell at the aerial bots, you disrespectful punks, and all that kind of stuff. Everyone was a disrespectful punk. Cup's a little more patient and wise, but he has his crankiness. So let's take a look at the back. I never understood exactly what vehicle he's supposed to be. Kind of a futuristic, like, pickup truck, I think, the way it looks. Well, there is Cup. Okay, he looks, uh, there's the box. I, I'm, I'm assuming he's a special background related to the 86 movie. This is part of the 86 series. Oh, Cup with a K. See, that's where I got confused. Okay. Eight and up. That's how many hours it should take me to transform him. And let's just get him out. Here he is. And he's in front of a, like a squid. Let me open this up for you. It's the movie. It's the squid scene, as you know. The that's um, I think they did this because of the popular uh, Netflix series that is out right now. Uh, Tiger Game? I don't know what the hell it's called. No, it's not that. It's squid something or other. It's for people who really like sushi. Okay, well, this is what Cup looks like in that scene, if that scene were two-dimensional and he were not. So let's move him a little closer and take... He looks grizzled. They gave him... This accessory made me laugh. I think it's supposed to be a, what's called a, a communicator. So it's like a walkie-talkie or a, a cell phone, which is hilarious. Because you would think they would all just pretty much have the the uh, ability to communicate with one another and download, upload information, whatever, and save things and an, an insanely large memory bank and they would not need any. They're basically walking cell phones and they can all GPS each other and send warning signals and this, that, and the other thing. So, okay, we got a little premature. And this is his blaster, because they don't want to say gun, I guess. And he can um, murder people with it. He can, he can murder other life forms, because the Autobots and Decepticons, the Transformers, are alive. They have uh, life sparks or whatever the hell, and I'm gonna spin them around. And a lot of you know a lot of these figures of this is not a complaint by any stretch of the imagination. They tend to have some kind of inadvertent backpack formation just because these things transform. But as far as I'm concerned, this whole line, which is pretty much the same line as the Siege Kingdom War Earthrise '86 Studio, whatever the hell. They're all they're making pretty much all the same Transformers, and um, 
the best combination of articulation and cartoon accuracy and transformation is all in this line, so I think it's absolutely wonderful. Right now, we're all giving so much love to Motu Origins, as we should. It's amazing. Uh, God, I've, I've dedicated like 100 hours or something to it in the last uh, two months, but... Um, this line deserves some loves to love too. I think Transformers fans get so many uh, different variations or different versions of Transformers and an endless amount of cartoons and figure lines and this and that and the other thing that they do get a little picky because of the of the big three of the '80s: Joe, He-Man, Transformers. Uh, Transformers has definitely uh, stayed in the spotlight uh, with, with no close second, the longest. Oh, I like that cool Autobot symbol. I usually don't even think about the, the Autobot or Decepticon symbol, but I like that. That stands out without being too intrusive. So, um, yep, better out of the package. Better out of the package. I think I always say that, but I think all toys are. Because they're toys. You play with, oh, jeez. I just imitated my, my, my fav one of my favorite wacky wrestlers, Danhausen. They're toys. They're evil, yes. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's try to transform him, huh? Heads up, both of these arms come off perfectly. Uh, the other one did as well for, uh, I think, to mimic the famous Fix Me scene. Um, so I don't think that was, that was an accident. They clearly, I have no idea why else these would come off and on. Uh, very cool. Just a little bonus. And here we have Cup. Well, that was fun. Fun boxing. And as you can see here, I've gone back to recreating the scene in the movie where Cup is destroyed because at this moment I could, uh, I think I'd be entertained by anything where Cup is destroyed. Uh, okay, so that didn't work out well at all. I think that's the first transformation on a fun boxing I actually didn't complete. I don't even know if his legs are facing the right way. No, they are. Okay, um, yeah, that didn't work. I had a lot of issues. So we're going to try it again another time. Or I'm just going to say he's too old to transform. Maybe, maybe. We'll blame Hot Rod. He didn't fix him right. He didn't fix him right, Chris. Meanwhile, why did I single you out? You poor guy. I should, I'm should. i sorry. I apologize, team of Chasing 80s Toys. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let's do something along the same theme, but a little bit different. I haven't seen one of these in forever. I'm talking about a reissue. So for our second Funboxing Transformer, and this is the gift from uh, from Gojitron I mentioned earlier, we are going to transform Hardhead, the Headmaster. This is a, I believe it's a Walmart reissue of the Headmasters. Now I gotta tell you, as a kid, the Headmasters um, weren't exactly my jam. By 87, I was more into Joe than Transformers, because I was just getting more Joes for Christmas and birthdays, but then in 88... Um, I was lucky out of nowhere. Uh, my aunt got me a Power Master Optimus Prime, which was lovely. So I actually started playing with the Transformers I already had again. Which I had a very uh, skeleton crew of Transformers, but I, uh, to have any version of Optimus Prime was way too awesome. Um, so I'd see on the in different ads and everything else at the same time these Headmaster guys, who uh, again I just couldn't obtain. It was easier to get my hands on extra Joes than it was Transformers. So, all I really know about the Headmasters, besides the Japanese series, which I've seen once and a half, the English dub version, uh, I've seen Rebirth, which was the end of Season 1, or Generation 1, rather, Season 3, and yeah, they call Return of Optimus Prime Season 4 and Rebirth Season 5, but it's all Season 3. Who the hell are we kidding? Let's get our heads out of our asses. No, okay, now, Bob, you didn't need to do that. That was unnecessary. So what I know about Hardhead here, is he the leader of the, uh, the Headmasters? I don't know, that's the name I remember the most. Uh, Doros. Okay, and let's take, uh, Doros, I guess, was a little guy that became, that becomes his head, or his brain. And on the back, wow. Oh, this is some very cool, um, later on, uh, very late G1 characters here. I think we got, um, the Alligator... Tron, and that's Fortress Maximus, I know that one, and I think that's oh, Mind Wipe is the Bat, and Weird Wolf has hypnotizing powers, I think. And yeah, these are all these these Headmasters, of course, they're trying to sell you, and I, Target Masters were the thing at the, the time, too, where the guy transforms into your gun, which actually, I don't know why the Transformers would need any of these things, quite honestly, but... 
either way, and you can just get a, a, an idea of the size of Fortress Maximus because right above my finger here, I believe, focus, that's our friend Hardhead who we're talking about today. And Scorponok, okay, yes, Scorponok, so those, those are very big villains. Let's take a look at some specs, shall we? Let's learn all about this guy. Okay, well, he knows five different languages. Okay, that's a little low for a giant computer. And these things all squiggle. That's his EKG. Um, okay, this is muscle must be strength, so he's pretty strong. I think brain is, he's kind of half smart. Speed, that's oh, a guy running. So he's kind of fast and firepower or it must be his weaponry. Okay, so he's very strong. He's got a lot of weapons. If my memory serves me and it doesn't, I think in Headmasters, when we get rid of Galvatron once and for all, um, I think Hardhead is the one who bumps him into, uh, off an iceberg and then turns Galvatron into a block of ice and he floats away. What a lame ending for Galvatron. But either way... This is very cool for me because I haven't touched a reissue box uh, in forever. I have seen these in stores, but they were just they were just all together, and I thought, well, let me leave them for someone who loves these characters. But now my, now my curiosity has peaked, and I have a funny feeling, despite him being a reissue of G1, I think he's going to go really well with the modern Transformers, like the ones I just um, well, the ones that I just eighty percent transformed. Uh, why do I have a funny feeling he's just going to look good with him anyway? What does he look like on the side here? Yeah, he's going to look pretty good. I have no idea what kind of tweaks they made between this one and the original 87, I want to say. Or 88 toy. I really have no idea. But let's crack him open. I'm going to let the camera run. And I do save all the Transformers boxes. Because you can easily transport them in the same box. It's not like Moto Origins as much as I love. I don't keep all the Moto Origins packages because, well, I know the originals came in styrofoam nine times out of ten, but this did not. So let's get them out. I'm just going to yap a little bit while we take them out. Okay. I'm going to take the scissors very carefully, like so. Oh, oh. Very carefully. Okie dokie. And I don't believe we have... The gun should be easy to get out. How was your day today? It's getting cold here in San Diego. People make fun of us for that, but it really does. So he reminds me a lot. I guess this is Doros. Um, I think Doros, uh, Doros sang Land Down Under in the uh, early to mid-80s. Is that correct? So he reminds me a lot of HQ, the little guy who came with Power Master Optimus Prime. I, I just In a way, they just build him. I think they build these guys pretty much all the same way. That's a face. So, okay, so he's going to transform into a head. I wonder if I could pull this, pull this off without the instructions, just make him a head. Well, I guess there you go. So now he's a head. <laughs> okay. Well, Doros, um, I have to do a bunch of head jokes now, don't I? Okay, well, good for him to get a head. And now let's head on over to take out this, this weapon here. This is a green blaster. He murders other Transformers with it, you understand? Okay. So what is so hard head? I'm going to do one of these here. Hard head is a tank, correct? And he looks enough like a futuristic tank, but also a tank tank that you kind of know what his function is. Which I, I appreciate that. Like, I don't mind that it's futuristic and very, uh, not season one or two ish. But, because it doesn't bother me, because, like, I know what it is. Like, even Blur and Cup, whose vehicle modes I goofed on, I mean, we kind of. We know what they're supposed to be doing, so it's not. I never thought that was too big of a deal. I'm not a car guy, though, so the fact that there was no longer a Porsche here and a Lamborghini there never really meant all too much to me. Um, we got wheels on them. Yeah, I got little wheels on the back. Okay. We got two sets of wheels there, no wheels in the front, so he's still gonna roll around, but I'm a stop motion guy. What the hell do I care? I love his vehicle mode. Firepower. Oh, and you can articulate. Again, I have no idea if the original one did this. This is a reissue. Let's see. We're gonna see what year the reissue is. Okay. So I'm just gonna gab for a little bit, alright? It's okay. 
and was made in tell me it was made in Vietnam they love Hasbro's been making everything in Nam I can't find it nope made in Vietnam there it is but what you know this is 2020 20, 2020 okay so this is a reissue from last year Last year was a good year for nobody. Okay. Uh, for a second, I thought this, the thought this was the Decepticon symbol right over here. No, that's an Autobot symbol. And those are nice, too. Hey, stickers I don't have to put on. I will never complain about that. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. Bit of firepower with the guy. Let me turn him around. I wonder if they want you to do one of these with him. Yeah, I guess you could, just for more shooting, I guess. How American. Okay, <laughs> easy, Bobby. There you go. Okay. Ah, I like the things on the side. He's a futuristic tank, but you can tell he's a tank. And in theory, if someone were to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, no way. No freaking way. Okay. You know, this does have instructions, Bob. Yes, I'm aware. Okay. I did not realize. I'm glad I caught that. What a dumbass I would be if I didn't catch that. Got a little tiny head on him, by the way, on on uh, Duran Duran over here. I can't. He won't focus. He doesn't focus. He just smiles and gives you a Vegemite sandwich. Okay. You like that one, Chris? <laughs> I like doing that. Okay, so I got Doros in here. He blends in well. Jeez. Oh, nice. And I'm not going to lose him. I don't lose anything. I'm not going to lose him in vehicle mode, though, because there he is. Oh, uh, very cool, very cool, very cool. Um, I knew I was going to like this. I didn't know I was going to love this. I, it didn't even occur to me. that we go, okay, they made him a driver. Plenty of ammo. I love the green, you know, military color. It's very, it's very G.I. Joe-ish in a way. Um, I, I almost don't want to transform him because this is too cool. This is too cool. But we're going to transform because he's a transformer, and I don't want to be 0-2 on the transformation for the fun boxing. And congratulations, Goji. You just made me a headmaster's guy. Wow. Very cool. Let me address this before I forget. I found out that um, this opens as well. I'm assuming that in vehicle mode, you can take the driver and uh, you just have him just sitting there shooting the gun as well. Shooting the giant cannon is um, what I meant. So this was... Uh, this took about three minutes, maybe, um, and this is the first time. I think, I think this is one of those transformations where if I had to, I could put them back uh, without looking, and I'm not going to need the instructions again. Keeping them, but not going to need them again, probably. And yeah, he is powerful. He has got military colors. I know what he is. I know what he's doing. I like him. He stands just great. Um, some of the advancements, the way things click just perfectly. I'm wondering if they made a few improvements. There it is. See? Didn't even transform all the way. I'm wondering if they made a few improvements from the uh, the original hard head. I have really no idea, but I wouldn't be surprised. Just the way a, lot, a few things click with a few certain pegs and slots where I'm like, that's reminiscent of what they got going on right now, except this is way simpler. And... Yeah, there's a little more hollowness and everything else than you'd find in a uh, cup, but um, I got more joy. <laughs> and, and also Hardhead is a special gift, too, so I'm going to get more joy out of that. But I don't hate Cup. He looks good. Let me just... Uh, sorry, Hardhead. I'm going to talk about both of both you at the same time. Um, it's just going to take me some work. Like Jazz, for example. I had so much trouble transforming Jazz. I was grumpy. And now I can do it with moderate trouble. So, what the hell... This is, how the hell does this even work here? Hang on a second here. Son of a bitch. I don't know if that's even right. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. Does that work? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't even know if Cup's shoulder is incorrectly. Okay. Um, what a beautiful reissue. And I do think he looks natural next to a cup uh, on your left, his right. Yeah, I wouldn't see the... Unless I was really staring at him, picking it apart. 
he fits right in, which is why I was hesitant with some reissues. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm already looking at this line here, and then I got these guys here. They isn't going to work. Uh, these do. My other, uh, my G1 Starscream reissue totally doesn't fly. My knockoff Prime reissue, Optimus Prime from G1, doesn't fly, but I don't care because it's Optimus freaking Prime, so you just shut your mouth. Um, but as far as putting together a big collaborative story, and it's on my brain, no promises. Uh, the writing's almost the easier part, but, um, you know, I'm just thinking about the future. In the meantime, hang on. Oh, uh, in the meantime, uh, once again, go as you made a believer out of me. He is more lightweight. I think he weighs less than Cup. This guy's pretty lightweight. He looks big and blocky. Um, but... I don't care that he's uh, he's a little hollow or whatever. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Like, am I supposed to lift weights with the freaking thing? I don't understand. He stands well. I love that. Um, here's the thing. I'm going to go off for a second here. When we were kids, and this is, again, why I hate ankle articulation in figures. Transformers don't really count because they usually don't have ankle articulation anyway. They don't have ankles. With Joe's and, and the Motus, too, as perfect as the Motus nearly are, the thing is, when we were kids, when our figures weren't being used, they were all laying down. They'd be like this. They were hanging, right? Like, did you did you pose? Like, you might have had them stand there for a minute or two, but when you went to school or when you went outside to play and didn't take them with you when you were riding your bike, all your let's pretend these are He-Man figures. It would they'd be lying somewhere. Maybe in a box or a bin or a bucket of, of something or just on a bed or just your wrestling figures, you'd, the matches you'd have. They'd be two guys going to fight, put them here, put the other two guys going to fight, put them there, and then have the matches, right? So I think that's one thing. And, uh, oh, modern wrestling figures too, which I don't, I don't really collect, but they have the same issue. Now they stand damn near 24-7. <laughs> I just, again... We don't need ankle articulation in figures. Is it a radical idea? Maybe. Am I a throwback? Am I a grumpy old man? But as a grumpy old man, to Gochi Tron for your uh, generous contribution to uh, making up half this fun boxing, I can only ask you guys oh, one small favor. Fix me. Oops. <laughs>